challenge people and play devil's advocate, that's what it's all about. Um, but also be open to new ideas and you know, really have your listening ears on if you like to hear other people's ideas. Um, remember also to focus on the whole area, not just your business or your interest area. This is about the whole district, the market district. So not even just the market or your business, but actually the whole area. And David will be able to clarify, I'm sure at some point, that area ish. <laughs> We're going to finish by 8 o'clock tonight. As I always say, you might finish earlier. If you get to the point where you've spoken enough and you've kind of fixed the world's problems and we're all done, then we can finish earlier. But we won't go on beyond 8 with the full part of the workshop. You're, of course, welcome to stick around and network with each other afterwards. Uh, but we will definitely finish. You'll definitely be able to get away by 8. Uh, I'm going to hand over to David now, who's going to give a bit of a recap as to where we're up to in the process. And the yep. Thank you. Thank you.
the district area as a whole, and that's uh, been first last week, and that's got membership uh, from a number of the sort of organisations in the area tonight, so Nick the Gardens, Ackman, who's on that, and Biela, who I've been to say, and David Long from the Files is on that, so I think if you're contributing on the reference group, the role of the reference group is really to be uh, kind of listen to what's going on, as well as be advisory in the process, as well as to act as a communication channel to their various networks. So that's really good. At the first workshop, people were asked as well, who else should the council be trying to talk to? And when you start engaging this area, there's a lot of people with lots of interest in this area. And just for example, uh, different cultural groups, uh, high need services, uh, people less well off, indigenous people, uh, LGBT people, uh, people with disabilities, schools, uh, schools. Some of these groups we've been talking about over the last few weeks and have got things set up coming up, so the schools are on the list. And the legal profession. There's a concentration of legal practices in there, so they're people who are uh, beginning to get a little bit more involved. So I think that's all I want to say for now. Thank you. Um, I'll save questions perhaps until a bit later on. I, I want to sort of get you through the process and then we'll do a Q&A at the end perhaps. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have questions when we're in the individual groups, feel free to sort of just grab me or grab David and I'll get the answers out of David if he's got them. Um, tonight, we really want to start focusing on some aspirations. But what we want to try and do tonight is really challenge you and challenge your thinking around aspirations and what you want from the market district. Um, those of you that came to the first two workshops will remember that we've been through a couple of processes where we have talked about lots of different ideas. And um, do you remember who was at the last workshop? Have a show of hands. Okay, so a good number of you. At the end of that workshop, we collated, do you remember you all wrote down your individual ideas? And then as a whole group, we collated them into about 13 different themes. So we've got those that we've kind of parked at the moment, and uh, we'll come to them in a bit. I think David's going to have a slide and talk about them. Uh, but we want to explore these ideas more, and to help that, Adelaide City Council staff have looked at those ideas that you suggested, and they've created three scenarios that we're going to put to you tonight um, as a basic starter for a conversation. Now, these scenarios aren't something that council has got in mind. They're not plans that are already written. These are just ideas that have been put together for the purpose of starting the conversation tonight. So the point is to help you realise that there are different choices that we can make about the future of this district and we want to hear your ideas in relation to those choices. Um, this is going to help us work towards identifying a joint scenario that we'd actually like to start putting into place, a real one. And so I'm going to hand back to David who's going to talk you through these scenarios that we've come up with for the evening and, uh, and then we'll get going in groups and get start hearing what you think about each scenario. So really concentrate on this bit because this is what we're going to be talking about. David. Okay, um, what I'll present is some facts in the area. There are some things which are happening which are kind of givens in some way, so I'll touch on that and uh, go over the initial aspirations. And as Becky said, the scenarios are deliberately a little bit foggy, so they intended to make you go, ah, oh, okay, so something different might be possible. Um, and the scenarios aren't really in the detail. So they're not really about you know, perhaps where should this road go, should there be bus lanes here, what infrastructure should go there. It's not really in that detail, it's not a bit higher. So in terms of some of the facts, um, currently in the city there's 22,000 residents and growth is planned. And I think in uh, over the next, say, 15, 20 years, oh, sorry. <laughs> Why did that one spot? In uh, 15, 20 years, the residential population of the city might be about 50,000 people. So that will mean growth. And more residents actually living in the market district. Jacob just handed out an aerial photograph just to remind you of kind of like the area of the district. Uh, one of the facts that's accepted, you can please know this, is the district is a major retail food area in Adelaide. And I don't know if to change that. And that's, that will continue on. Uh, climate change means there will be more heat and more wind and that will require less water and that will require sustainable responses. It's a little bit difficult for that kind of thing has to be factored in. So we said it's a bit of a given. We're also going to look tonight, all we mentioned that Victoria Street is actually fully redeveloped for the next 20 years. We hope it is. That's not a bad 
budget commitment tonight. That's just a, that, let's hope it does happen in the next 20 years. And some of the other changes happening. Small bar growth is happening. Uh, you don't need to write all this down, just we'll put this online. Uh, the uh, RK, the Systemic Way Building, will probably be uh, seriously reconsidered and probably possibly be developed over the next 20 years. There is pressure for Chinatown growth. Uh, there are changes in terms of transport.
This impacts of workers with businesses, folks with research, business support, professional and legal. A dozen high-rise office blocks that are developed in the district. With some retail and cafes at the ground level. The air is it's really good for doing business. Leveraging off the proximity to the CBD, where there's existing CBD offices, with the markets on their doorsteps, and with this available under development. Small line time bars were established, here there being more workers, but in limited numbers. Residents living in the area grew from about 700 to about 2,000. Green Street's restaurant, restaurant role remained as it was extended southwards through Field, Compton and Market Streets, connected to King William Street South with all the offices. Chinatown spilled out on the Walford Street and west along Walford Street. Boat Street became more active with pedestrians. A new arcade opens out both on the Boat Street and Victoria Square, with corporate offices above. The shops are oriented towards the corporate sector. Connecting to the area is made much easier by the establishment of a much larger tram network, which went to Metropolitan Adelaide and Adelaide Airport, as well as there being buses and bikes. The many small streets heading towards the train station where to ice and cafe and coffee shops. Is it possible to actually about food and about vibrancy? Trade agreements with the region in Asia, demand for South Australia's clean, green food blossoms. The unique and affordable experience of the markets was leveraged by educators in establishing an international food research and education centre. And from that, located on what was the bus station, this food research and exploration centre had business incubators in the and had mixed housing above. The building was powered by the sun and we used waste water from the area. The ran trains from the lane in Franklin Street that's over there. It merged tourism, crafting and media businesses run by local entrepreneurs focused on food-based experiences. The area was well connected to the CBD and again up to the train station. All this activity underpinned the markets, continuing its iconic tradition. But it was accompanied by what used to be a single-story arcade building being redeveloped with Arlison's Market to share community spaces, meeting spaces above. And a mix of tourist accommodation and offices were built above and a welcoming entrance on Victoria Square. Chinatown expanded along Morford Street and also along Field Street, offering increased variety of food and services. Goody Street restaurants expanded further west along Goody Street and also south down streets like Compton Street. Then where there are rooftop restaurants established above food wholesalers and storage areas. Market Street, in that little India precinct. These people friendly streets made good connections to the many multi level offices on King William Street South. Victoria Square, Pumpanga, became an indigenous biodiversity area with food picked, tours hosted, and children taught. Around 2,000 people lived in the area, and many people worked in the area, but most people knew in the area as a destination.